everyone, it's Ashley and Shelly, and I'm wearing my stethoscope again because we're gonna talk about the human body. We've been talking about our human bodies because what kind of animal are we? Humans. Christopher right here is a cat, Shelly behind me is a turtle, and I am a human. So, we've been talking about a system in the human body the digestive system. Can you guys say that again at home? Digestive system, great. So we've talked about the first few organs in our digestive system. This week, we are gonna talk about the next part of it. So I've got my human behind me and I'm gonna peel back his skin and peel back his bones and we're gonna see what we're learning about this week. So. I've got my human right here, and I'm going to peel back his skin. And look at that. We've got these bones. Now I'm going to peel back the rib cage, and we're going to see what organs we've gone over from here. So let's go through these organs. So I've got the beginning of our digestive system and that is your esophagus. Can you guys say esophagus? Very good. So I'm gonna put my esophagus underneath the mouth because food goes in the mouth, down the esophagus, and then it lands in the stomach. Can you guys say stomach? Great job. I'm gonna put the stomach right under the esophagus. So now we've got these two things right here to talk about. These are called your intestines. Can you guys say intestines? Great job. And these are the next part of your digestive system. We've got the large intestine and the small intestine. And look, this small intestine fits right inside the large intestine. I'm gonna put these organs back in my human and let's talk more about our intestines, the next stop in the digestive system. There we go, we've got the large intestine and inside of it fits the small intestine. Today, we are gonna read a book and it's gonna be about the digestive system. And this is one of everyone's favorite books during school. This is Chewy Gooey Rumble Plop. And it's a really great book and the best part is it's a pop-up book. So, open wide. Humans are hollow. Yes, you are basically just a tube with a hole at each end. Food goes in one hole and, well, something else comes out the other. But what goes on in between? And we've got a pop-up mouth. The journey begins. Big mouth. Let's look at the top hole first. As well as allowing you to speak, it's where your food starts its journey through your body. A gross and gooey voyage that could take as long as three days. Spit and drool. Seeing and smelling food makes you drool. Have you noticed that food doesn't taste the same when you have a stuffed up nose? This is because smell also helps you to taste. The drool is called saliva. Can you guys say saliva? Great job. It's saliva's job to make chewed up food wet, which helps it slip down. It also starts the gooey, gunky digestion process. So this book also has more information on these pages. So I'm going to read a little bit of this. Teeth are the hardest things in your body and they need to be. They mash up all the stuff you eat. And over here we've got a pop up of the mouth and look, they must be eating something. There's some saliva, there's food on the tongue and it goes over. You have sharp incisors and canines. You also have bumpy molars and top and bottom teeth work in pairs. 
So there's that pop-up mouth. And there's that pop-up mouth. And now let's see where food goes next. And over here we've got gulp. The chewed up food is shifted to the back of your mouth by your tongue. You swallow and powerful muscles push it downward. And now over here, we've got an esophagus. Can you guys say esophagus again? Great, so let's see what it's saying about our esophagus. Easy squeezy. A tube is called the esophagus that connects the back of your throat to your stomach. Each mashed up mouthful of swallowed food forms a lump called a bolus, which is squeezed and squished down the esophagus to your stomach by rings of muscle. The squeezing movement is called peristalsis. Mucus and the wrinkly rigid surface protect the lining of the esophagus from sharp pieces of food. And down it goes. This is a chewed up piece of food and it goes down, down, down with those muscles. It squeezes and pushes it down. So now let's look at this side. It says chomp, chomp, all will be revealed. Let's look inside here. We've got the digestive system again. So let's learn about our intestines. Right here, is the small intestine. After the stomach, the mashed up food enters the small intestine, a very long and twisty tube. Look at that long, twisty, small intestine. And after that is the large intestine. It is the final leg of the food journey. The little thing sticking out like a wiggly worm is the appendix. It's important in some animals, but does not do anything in humans. So down there, that's the appendix. So we're gonna close that up and you've got your large intestine and your small intestine. Now let's fold this back in. Now we've got another cool picture. This says your stomach is turning. The stomach is like a stretchy muscular bag with a valve at each end to keep the food from escaping. These valves are like water taps. They turn on and off to let the food flow in or out of the stomach, like water from a faucet. And there's a faucet right here that look, the stomach fills and empties. Absorbing. Now, all the chemicals that make up your food have been chopped up into small useful bits or nutrients And look at this, we've got another great diagram of the digestive system. And this one begins at the stomach. So food goes in the stomach, goes down, and now we're gonna talk about the small intestine. But it is right in there. The small intestine is called small because the hole down the middle is pretty narrow, but it's very long, more than 20 feet in a grown-up. And because you need a big surface to absorb your nutrients from your food, the inside is wrinkly. So this small intestine is called small because it is thinner. It's a narrow tube, but there are 20 feet of intestines wrapped up in that area that makes up your small intestine. So it's called small because it's skinnier than your large intestine, but it is actually longer. Now we're gonna talk about the large intestine, which is right here, this big one. The large intestine is shorter, but much wider than the small intestine. The sloppy stuff that enters the large intestine is made up of all the things your body doesn't digest. Plus lots of bacteria. It dries out in the large intestine. The water is recycled to your bloodstream. Drying out can take from 18 hours to two days. So that is your food's journey in those two intestines. The small intestine, which is skinny and long, 
and the large intestine, which is called large because it's wider or fatter, oops, but it's actually shorter in length. This one says, you are what you eat, so eat healthy. And look, she's feeling strong when her belly's filled with nutritious food. And now we've got one more part on this page, and this is your intestines. And look through, you could see these different rings, and that's where they pull out the nutrients. See the food traveling through? And those arrows pointing out, that is the intestines taking the nutrients to the rest of your body. And then whatever they can't use keeps going down the tube. Now, are you guys ready for the last page? It's always the most fun. Get ready because we're gonna see what happens at the end of your digestive system. Where is that guy? On the potty. And it says at the top, toilet time. So we're gonna learn about the last stage of digestion, which happens in the bathroom. The journey ends. Every journey comes to an end, and so does the journey of your food. Once your body has taken all the good things it needs, the leftovers are pushed out of your body, through your bottom, as gross and gunky poop. Plop. So I want to show you guys in the sink, there's a, something else to lift. And it says, most of the bacteria in your digestive system are harmless, but not all of them. So when you've been to the toilet, it's very important to wash your hands. There are some very nasty diseases spread by germs on dirty hands. So when he's all done using his potty, He's gonna go wash his hands in the sink. The end. That was a really good book. And it went through everything in our digestive system, not just our large and small intestine, which we're talking about now. So just as a little reminder, this is your small intestine or what it looks like. And it's very thin and very long. Your large intestine fits around it and is very fat or wide, but shorter. So your small intestine is called the small intestine because it's skinnier. And your large intestine is called the large intestine because it's fatter. So that's all for today. And I hope you guys enjoyed the book. I know it's everybody's favorite when we're back at school. And now that you've learned about the small intestine, in the large intestine, it's time to do some activities. Bye everyone, I will see you next time.